Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 284 on August the 18th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we'll cover the trades from last week on Yellow Corporation, Chemical Corporation, and AMC Entertainment Holdings, and we discuss three new trades on Tilray Brands, the Direction Daily S&P Biotech Bear 3X Shares ETF, and Suncor Energy. It's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And for anyone that wants to learn to trade options, not just study theory, uh, I teach students how to trade options with the combination of videos and live coaching calls. So if you're ready to take your trading to the next level, send me an email to schedule a phone call. Now the equity markets finished the week 2% lower. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 780 points, closing at 34,500 points. The S&P 500 index lost 94 points, ending the week at 4,369 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week this week is valuing risk. In finance, there's a concept called expected return. When I was first learning to trade options, we would use this concept to attempt to calculate the expected return of various outcomes. The goal was to attach a financial value to our decision-making process. Expected return is great in some aspects because it teaches people to consider that different outcomes have different probabilities or likelihoods of winning. To calculate the expected return, you take the profit associated with outcome A multiplied by the probability of outcome A, and you add that to the profit of outcome B multiplied by the probability of outcome B. The result of this equation gives you the expected return of a particular trade or investment decision. The biggest problem with this equation is that it is purely theoretical. We never actually know the real probabilities of each path. Because I risk real money when trading options, I try to limit the amount of theoretical numbers I use in my trading decisions. That brings me to the actual topic of this week. When it comes to valuing risk, I want to calculate the actual financial risk of the trade. The financial risk of a trade is the total amount of money you can lose on that trade. You might think this is a theoretical number, but it is not. If we execute a covered call strategy that only uses $300 in capital, our total risk is $300. It doesn't matter where the stock goes, our total risk does not change. If we buy a spread, our total financial risk is the amount of money that we paid to enter the trade. If we sell a spread, the total financial risk is the amount of money that we can lose if the spread goes against us. That is why I always mention the maximum possible loss when I speak about credit spreads. I've used this terminology on every show since I began discussing credit spreads on the show. I know this topic of the week is longer than normal, but I really want to reiterate this point. It's very important. Knowing your maximum possible loss for each trade allows you to manage a position better than any other metric you can use. If you size your trades for maximum profit, you will likely blow out your account eventually. In fact, I could almost promise you you're going to blow out eventually. Remember, becoming consistently profitable as a trader is about learning to manage risk. There are lots of ways to make money in the market. You need to understand what makes each of those strategies lose money so that you can play defense and protect your portfolio. So that's it for the topic of the week. Let's get into the trade review from last week and It's funny, I almost didn't want to record this show because of the covered call from last week. I even sometimes wish that I could go back and edit shows just to erase 
bonehead decisions out of the uh, out of the mix. But you can't. It's a podcast. It exists out there. I can't re-record and suddenly repost episode 283 without it being out of order and you guys would know something was up anyway. And I wouldn't do that to my fans. I'm not one of those talking heads who just gets to talk about trades and never actually own up to any of their errors. (laughs) So let's talk about one of my errors. We looked at a covered call on Yellow Corporation, symbol Y as in Yankee, E as in Echo, L as in Lima, L as in Lima. At the time, the stock was trading for $1.86 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the September 2 call at $0.30, which could give us a maximum return of 23.66% in five weeks. Well, shares of Yellow Corporation were delisted as of Wednesday, August the 16th. The shares are trading in the -the uh, over-the-counter market for much less. This was a trade that I didn't mind in theory because all of the numbers worked out. However, the delisting appeal uh, they made to the NASDAQ was the most important concern that I missed. Uh, My brokerage actually wouldn't let me trade it um, because of the impending delisting. They didn't want to deal with it. So the option, if you were able, if I had even been able to sell the option, the option would have expired worthless because it's out of the money. The stock is actually trading at $1.05 in the over-the-counter market, uh, leading to a net loss of $0.51 on the week uh, had I actually been able to enter the trade. Now, typically, I wouldn't worry about a $0.50 loss because I would simply roll the option lower or plan to roll it to the next month to keep collecting premiums. I'm now adding avoid bankruptcy to my list. I'm an options guy and can count on one hand the number of times I've dealt with a bankruptcy uh, situation in my entire trading career. The last time was with Lehman Brothers, and I was a youngster back then, and it seems that I didn't remember uh, the errors uh, of my trading from 2008. And in either uh, scenario, I didn't have much risk on in the first place, but I did have a position on uh, that did not make money. So thank you to everyone that wrote in to me. My responses were mostly tied to the numbers, not the fact that the stock was being delisted in two days. So I am pulling a very large foot out of my mouth. I'm wiping egg off of my face and moving on. Sometimes you just want to hide or ignore a bad call. Maybe just skip over it as if I made a mistake or as if, I, as if I hadn't made the mistake at all. I actually considered that. I considered, you know, maybe I'll just go ahead and just dive in with the credit spread and the debit spread, which are the trades that I am more likely to uh, put on each week anyway. But that wouldn't be fair to you guys. That's not who I am. So sometimes you make mistakes and it's this is obviously a very public one for me because there are several hundred of you who listen to the show every week. And I really love that you listen to the show because I'm a real guy who trades real money and I actually have a real trading career. I've got an, I've got an actual resume. So I learned a long time ago in trading, you don't get fired for losing money. Typically, you will get fired for hiding the fact that you lost money. And if you hide a, a large enough number, you actually go to jail. So <laughs> we've seen that. So I'm not hiding this time. Let's just say I'll add this one to the uh, Eric is a bonehead list and let's move on. (laughs) We'll move on to the next trade. The next one was a credit spread on Cameco Corporation. Symbol C as in Charlie, C as in Charlie, J as in Juliet. At the time, the stock was trading for $34.79 per share. I looked at selling the September 34, 33 put spread at 33 cents which could give us a maximum possible loss of $0.67 per spread. Well, shares of Cameco Corporation lost $0.13, ending the week at $34.66 per share. The the out-of-the-money put spread that we sold is still out of the money. We would lose $0.04 if we were to try to close the trade immediately, and that's just because of crossing the bid-ask spread. Now, there's certainly no need to make any adjustment at this point, We are still nearly $1 above the break-even point. So if stock were to expire today, this trade would actually expire out of the money and we would keep the full premium that we collected for selling the spread. So this one is working out. No adjustments are needed. 
continue to track this trade and be ready to make any adjustments uh, that are needed to maintain a profit. And as a side note, sometimes I will not trade the near near the money strikes only if I if I can get an equal or, or equivalent uh, value for moving further away from the strikes, then I'll do it. That means if I can buy a deeper in the money spread for roughly the same amount of money and get an, get an equivalent return, I'll do it just to, just to build in a little cushion. I did that in this case. We cre there's a little bit of a cushion in there. And uh, actually, it was the stock price that gave us the cushion because the half strikes weren't listed yet. So there's a little cushion, and that saved us from having to worry about anything. So we still are nearly a dollar above the break-even point. So keep track of this trade and where the stock is going, but so far, so good. Our final trade from last week was a debit spread on AMC Entertainment Holdings, symbol A as in Alpha, M as in Mike, C as in Charlie. At the time, the stock was trading for $5.26 per share. I looked at buying the September 4 half five call spread for 23 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 27 cents, or that's a 117.39% return in five weeks. Now, shares of AMC lost $1.18 ending the week at $4.08 per share. The in the money spread that we bought is now out of the money. We would lose 21 cents if we were to close this trade out immediately. However, we know better than to do that. We can start to look at making an adjustment on this trade. Turning this into the five, five half credit spread would allow us to collect five cents, which just isn't worth it at this moment. We could sell the three, two half put spread at 28 cents and recoup the money that we lost on the call spread. There's still four weeks before our expiration, so I would hold off on making any adjustments to see if this stock continues to break lower or if it pulls higher. You don't want to sell that put spread too soon. You also don't want to exit the long call spread until you're certain that the stock price will not return higher in the coming weeks. Have a plan and track this stock. When it's time, trade the plan and adjust the trade according to your plan uh, in order to minimize loss and either create or maximize the possibility of a profit. All right, so that's it for last week's trade review. Let's move on to greener pastures. That is always the new trades. All of the trades this week are going to use the September 15th expiration for monthly options in the month of September. So let's go ahead and start off with the covered call. I'm looking at Tilray Brands, symbol T as in Tango, L as in Lima, R as in Romeo, Y as in Yankee. The stock ended the week at $2.64. I'm looking at buying stock and selling the September 3 call at $0.15, cents, which could give us a return of 19.32% in three weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $2.64 and selling the September 3 call at $0.15. Cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $3 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $2.49 per share. And in real terms, the stock purchase will require $264 and you'll collect $15 for selling the option. And for what it's worth, I made sure Tilray Brands was not in uh, bankruptcy and had not uh, is not expecting to be delisted. In fact, they actually just bought a cannabis line of drinks, cannabis drink line this past week, and the company appears to be doing okay. So <laughs> that's that's what you do when you make a stupid mistake. Adjust uh, your strategy. Make sure that you are covering your bases. I've had trades in the past that would have been great had I just waited until after earnings, but because I didn't, I just fell in love with the numbers and executed the trade, it ended up costing me a chunk of money, and I hate that. So that's it. I'm not gonna refer to it anymore. If anyone wants to send me an email uh, and call me a bonehead, hey, I accept it. Uh, just know that I've got questions coming for you too. So hey, be careful throwing the first stone. Let's go ahead and look at the credit spread for this upcoming week. Starting off with the Direction Daily S&P Biotech Bear 3X Shares ETF. Symbol S as in Sierra, O as in Oscar, X as in X-Ray, S as in Sierra. The stock ended the week at $11.23 per share. I'm looking at selling the September 11 
10 put spread at 35 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 65 cents per spread. Then you enter this trade by selling the September 11 put at 90 cents and concurrently buying the September 10 put for 55 cents. This is a credit spread because we're selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $11 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $10.65 per share, and in real terms, you would receive $35 per spread that you sell and have $65 at risk. And our final trade for the week is going to be a debit spread on Suncor Energy, symbol S as in Sierra, U as in Uniform. The stock ended the week at $33.11 per share. I'm looking at buying the September 32 33 call spread for 63 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 37 cents, or that's a 58.73% return in four weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the September 32 call for $1.62 and concurrently selling the September 33 call at 97 cents. This is a debit spread because we're buying the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $33 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $32.63 per share, and in real terms, you'll pay $63 to enter the spread, and your maximum gain is $37 per spread. That's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you to everyone that sends me an email each week. You guys are awesome. I really do love the interaction, and I've got a surprise coming for everyone listening to the show uh, in the coming weeks. I'll be letting you know about uh, a new a new uh, a new opportunity um, to get connected and so really excited about it just trying to build it out make sure it's good before I make the official announcement so keep listening definitely shoot me an email if you have any questions or any comments and as always I hope you guys have a great weekend happy trading thank you for listening to the weekly option podcast please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.